Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, it is the beginning of the month, and that means we have some Linux Mint updates. And I want to walk you through what is new in the Linux Mint world. Of course, we just saw in the last couple of weeks, we saw the LMDE 6 drop. And I did a video looking at that, and then we also did one looking at changing the desktop environment on that as well. So you can go back and have a look at those videos as well. But also in the recent days, the Edge version has also dropped. So the Edge version is an Ubuntu Linux Mint based version with a more up-to-date kernel for people that have newer hardware. Now, this is actually, I've had to use not only, not just that, but I did have to upgrade the kernel on my newer laptop because it had a Ryzen 5 with some integrated graphics and I needed a newer kernel to run the display drivers. And so that's really why they do these particular versions. So let's go ahead and have a look at the Linux Mint blog and see what they have to say. Uh, first and foremost, we have a thanks for the uh, beta testers and the donations. Now, the these ISO images in LMDE 6 and in 21.2 allows secure boot to come back and so if you are having a computer that you really want or need that secure boot to have a more secure system lmde 6 and linux mint 21.2 edge version both bring back secure boot this is something they said they were going to do i am not sure if this has been backported to all of ubuntu yet although ubuntu does utilize secure boot as part of the uh, test for the recent uh, tpm based full disk encryption we have a video about that and uh, I'm assuming they probably have that fixed as well, but I really don't know. I haven't looked much into it. I just knew Linux Mint was working on it. And so these updates, those two distributions do have Secure Boot restored for Linux Mint users. They are also now able to produce ISO images faster in a much simpler way. So this greatly reduced the internal differences between Mint and LMDE images, which should support a wider variety of BIOS and EFI implementations as they now boot the same way. This is good. We are moving closer to LMDE being on complete par with the Ubuntu version, which many people are uh, concerned about uh, with the direction Ubuntu has been making. And I kind of echo those sentiments. Uh, the next, the GTK4 Libidweta system. Uh, this is a, uh, <laughs> this has caused a little bit of a problem uh, with LMDE6. While working on LMDE6, we came across applications written the GTK4 Libidweta uh, system. These applications are designed for GNOME only and do not support themes. Isn't that wonderful? We're getting like GNOME is starting to behave like Windows and Apple. You can only use it here, you know. <laughs> uh, but this makes them look different from all other applications and looks out of place. They solved this in LMDE 6 by removing one of them and downgrading the other apps back to the GTK 3 version. Some people might look at this and say, well, this is one of the problems with Linux Mint is it it still carries on to old libraries it's not jumping on the Wayland support. Honestly, I think this is better because it's going to support more systems because the next is going forward. They're going to come up with a decision on how to handle this in the long term. And they are going to have this fixed for Linux Mint 22. As of right now, it's still very early. You can still roll those packages back a little bit, but it will come a point in time when these are going to be the, the core base. But now we have this question. Okay, so packages are written that are really only designed to run on GNOME. That kind of raises a few questions about the uh, methodology, the philosophy, and the direction of the GNOME project. So that's something to think about. Very interesting indeed. And as far as the releases, LMDE 6, which we've talked about, we have a couple videos on that, and Linux Mint 21.2 Edge were recently released. Uh, the LMDE 6 comes with Linux kernel 6.1. The Edge comes with Linux kernel 6.2. So if you need a... Uh, if you need a Linux Mint distribution with a newer kernel than the, I think, 5.15 is what I think it ships with. We'll see that on the next screen. So we'll see what that looks like, or an upcoming screen, I should say. So uh, these updated Grub versions and Secure Boot support both uh, releases feature the latest change announced in L Linux Mint 21.2. And for those on LMDE 5, the end of life is going to be July 2024. So you have, what is that, roughly nine months before you're going to need to make that switch to LMDE 
uh, 6. Now, they do have an upgrade path from LMDE 5 to LMDE 6. So I believe there is uh, yep, a blog post right there. Uh, so you can, uh, I'll, link, I'll link this particular post down there and then you can click on the link here uh, for the upgrade path. Thank you for the sponsors of all of Linux Mint, who definitely makes a really good distribution worth it. All right, so that is what they're doing. Let's have a look at where you can find these distributions. Um, first, if you go, actually, let's go back up to the main download. So here we have the LMDE6, we have the Linux Mint 21.2, and then there's the All Versions tab down here. So the Linux Mint 21.2 this will take you over to the main screen. Now, these are the Ubuntu-based ones. So we have the Cinnamon, we have the Mate, we have the XFCE, and now we have the Edge Edition. So the Edge Edition, it is 2.8 gigabytes in size, way smaller than Ubuntu's 4.5 gigabytes. Why in the world Ubuntu is getting so bloated is beyond me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Snaps! Excuse me. Wow. Wow. Okay, um, <laughs> we do have only a 64-bit, so that's a downside. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. Uh, let me see LMDE6. I want to see if they have a 32-bit or not. Uh, download. There's. Yep, they have a 64-bit and a 32-bit. So if you do want the, if you want a 32-bit system on Linux Mint, the LMDE6 option still does give you a 32-bit. All right. Uh, so the Here's uh, verifying your distro is very important. They provide the instructions here on how to do that. We have download mirrors. And then the edge version here. Uh, so edge version uh, has 6.2 kernel versus the 515 LTS, which is included in Linux Mint 21. And the reason they use such an older kernel, for those that are curious, it's because it does provide a lot more wider range of support with a lot more stability. The 6.2 is not going to be as stable, but it will support newer hardware. And so that is the warning that they give you on the actual download. So you can see 21.2 has 5.15, 21.2 Edge has 6.2. Now I will mention that you can go in and you can upgrade the kernels from the Linux Mint Update Manager. Uh, so you can actually upgrade those. I don't think you can do that. I don't think that tool is available in the LMDE option. I didn't see it when I was poking around with that distribution, but for sure on the Ubuntu version, you can roll up the kernel. That's what I did. I had to roll up my kernel a little bit to support the better, uh, the better hardware. Um, but because when I installed Linux Mint on that laptop, I did not, the there was not an edge version available, which would support a, a newer kernel. But overall, the system works as expected. We do only have, again, the 64-bit, but you can go ahead and download that, and that'll bring us back to our blog. So that is what Linux Mint is up to. A lot of great new changes. This is why I continuously work with Linux Mint and still recommend it as one of the best Linux distributions. It just works. They're always on the ball. They listen to the uh, the community and they solve some real problems so with that thank you for watching and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux thank you for watching this video from switched to linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now you can be a supporter at patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.